hello everyone welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time this is reggae school of fashion few weeks ago i got a message from one of my facebook followers rukayat fafuwara moshud by name requesting for an illustration on how to make this particular star for this reason in this video i'll be showing you how to make a top with that manipulation which is generally called princess that and i will be achieving this tie by making use of two methods of that manipulation which are slash and spread method and pivot method using this image as a reference point lest i forget if you haven't joined my facebook community so with fun kindly join now the link to the group is in the description box below this video this is a community for male and female fashion designers who are interested in fashion designing using pattern drafting method. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. My name is Balaji and this is Reggae School of Fashion. I think the first thing we need to do is to interpret this style before going into drafting. The style is in two parts. We have the upper part and we have the lower part. The upper part of the dress starts from the neckline and stops on the natural waistline. While the lower part of the dress starts on the natural waistline and stops on the desired skirt length. But our concentration will be on the upper part. So for the upper part of the dress, Firstly, the neckline is an asymmetrical neckline. We have one side of the neckline as an off the shoulder and the other side is not off. So in connecting the two points together, the neckline will be in an asymmetrical form. So that is what make, makes the neckline to slant. Secondly, the upper part of the dress has what we call the neckline yoke. And thirdly, the joining we have at the center front of the dress. This is achieved by making use of that manipulation. The waist that is being closed and is open on the mid arm hole. So that is why we can easily cut two different fabrics to achieve the center front of the dress. This style can easily be achieved using pattern drafting method as it may be difficult to cut with free hand. I will start by transferring my basic bodice block on a fresh pattern paper. This is the foundation of every style you are making. If you did not get the drafting of your basic bodice block right, you have already gotten the style wrong. So if you don't know how to draft a basic bodice block or you are not sure if you are doing it in the right way, I have a video on how to draft a basic bodice block, well detailed and very easy to understand. The link to the video will be available in the description box. As I said earlier, our concentration will be on the front bodies so i'll be transferring the front bodies on a fresh pattern paper and my pattern will be on fold and this is the center front of my basic bodice block so i have to transfer this first because it's a basic bodice block and it has to be graded to my desired style based on our reference picture So guys, I've transferred my basic bodice block on a fresh pattern paper and I will be grading this pattern based on the picture, the image you are using as reference point. So firstly, I will work on the dart area. Because we are applying dart manipulation, I need more than one inch on the waistline for my dart. So I will be adding one inch to this to make it two inches. So this is my ball span measurement. 3.5 inches then from that point I will measure my dart intake I'm using 2 inches as my dart intake I will be erasing the format that I have on my pattern so from the center front 
to this point is my bust fan measurement then from this point i measure two inches as my dart intake and the midpoint is one inch so which is this point then i'll be connecting this point to my apex apex is the boss the boss power measurement on the bust level this is my waist level this is my under the bust level this is the bust level and this is the chest level so apex is the boss pan point on the bust level so that is from the center front i'll insert my bust pan measurement which is 3.5 inches so is this point so this point is my apex So this time around, I'll be connecting my dart to the apex point because this is not my final dart. So I'll be connecting the midpoint to the apex point. Then the remaining two points I have on both sides. Now to the under the bust level, I will measure my dart intake on the under the bust on my basic bodice block. I have 0 0.5 inches there. Then on my new pattern paper, I have 1.125. 1 then I will subtract 0 0.5 from 1 1.125. 0 0.5. So what I have left is 0 0.625. In case you get lost at this point with the value I'm calling, I have a full tutorial on how to read your measuring tape accurately for pattern drafting. How to read the small lines you have on your measuring tape, how to convert your fraction value to decimal, and how to convert your decimal fraction, your decimal value to fraction. The link to the video is available in the description box as well. So on the under the bust level, I will add the extra 0 0.625. So this is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.625. 0 0.5, 0 0.625. So then I will reconnect the side. Then I will come to the neckline and work on the neckline area. But before working on the neckline area, I will have to cut out this pattern and open it up because the two sides are not the same. The two sides of the front bodies are different. So can you see? This is one side of the front and this is the other side of the front and this is the center front so I will trim off the pattern so before I cut on the waistline I will fold my dart So with this, I can locate my dart leg easily. The center of the dart is the dart leg. So after cutting out the pattern, I will transfer all my lines to the other side of the pattern using my tracing wheel.
So the next step is to work on the neckline area. So I'll be working on the neckline area because one side of the style is an off shoulder. So I'll be connecting the off shoulder point to the basic neckline point. So you have to decide where you want your off shoulder to be, either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. But based on our reference image, I think the off shoulder falls on the left hand side. Yeah. So it falls on the left hand side. So I will be bringing the off shoulder to this side. So from my basic arm O, I will be subtracting four inches. So from the shoulder line, the tip of the shoulder line, I will measure four inches downward around the arm O. So which is this point? So after getting the point, then I will connect this to meet the basic neckline. So based on the reference picture, one side of the dress is high, while the other side is low. And the other side that is low is not too low, not really low. So that was why I measured four inches. But if you want yours to be very low, to be obvious that it's an off shoulder, you can make use of 4.5, 5 inches to 6 inches. What you can use is between 4 to 6 inches. So, but based on the reference image, I'll be making use of 4 inches. And I'll be connecting this with a slight curve to connect with the basic neckline. So you can make this any shape of your choice. You can make it a straight line, you can make it a slightly curved line, and you can make it a very curved line. It all depends on your preference. So now we have a connection from one side of the bodies to the other side of the bodies. So this will be going off. So, but before cutting it off, I have to get the mid arm hole around this side. So, I'm taking the measurement of the arm hole to get the midpoint. So, and I have nine points. So half of 9.25 is 4.625, 4.625, so this is the midpoint. So this is the midpoint of the ham hole. So I can cut this out now, but make sure you have a smooth connection from, from the ammo area to the other side of the neckline. Also, from the center, I came down by 0.5 inches. You can come down as much as you want. This will have effect around the center. So this will determine how low and exposed this area will be. Okay, so this is settled, we are good. Now we want to separate the two patterns. Now we want to separate the two sides. That is where that manipulation is involved. Firstly, I will be closing the waist dart. I will be transferring the waist dart to the mid arm hole. This is the mid arm hole for this side and this is the mid arm hole for this side. So I will be transferring this to this point and this to this point. So for this I will use slash and spread method. I'm cutting out the dart. Then I will cut out the dart on the other side as well. With your dart manipulation, you can achieve any style of your choice. 
that manipulation helps you to be creative you create your own style you create your own unique style with the help of that manipulation after cutting out the dots i'll be transferring this dot to the mid armhole on both sides of the pattern so i'll first draw a straight line connecting where the dart is moving to this is the this is where the dart is moving to so i'll be connecting these points to the apex using my straight roller then same thing on the other side This is the mid arm hole and this is the hip X. So there's the apex point. Apex point is different from your dart point. Okay, and because it is slash and spread, I will open up this and close the waist dart. So I'll be cutting on the straight line and when it's about one over height of an inch to get to the apex, I will stop. I'm not cutting through. Look at this. This is another style you can create from that manipulation apart from our uh, referenced image. Let's assume I want to create another style now. I'll just open this hub close this or remove this completely cut this with a different fabric then the other side as well cut it out and cut it with a uh, cut it with another fabric same fabric on both sides and the center fabric will be different so what i have from here to the neckline on both sides will be will be different and what i will have on the two sides will be different so the imagination the creativity is endless it all depends on you so just be good in your dart manipulation and you are good in creating any style of your choice. So I've opened this hub and I'll open up the other side. So when it's about to get to the apex point, so, so, when good it, with your, good, not good on your, good with your dart and pin. So when it is about to get to the apex point, I stopped. So I've opened up this now. This is our waist dart. I'm closing the waist dart now. So once I close the waist dart, the dart will open up on the mid arm hole automatically. Now I'm closing the waist dart on the other side of the pattern. So once I close the waist dart, the dart will open up automatically on the mid ham hole. After opening up the ham hole dart, the next step is to transfer this pattern on another pattern paper, on a fresh pattern paper. So actually I'm supposed to be making use of the pivoting method I mentioned in the beginning of this video but because i don't want this video to be too complicating so i'll be making use of the same slash and spread method if i should make use of the pivot method now it will be like two different new things you are learning at the same time so learn the slash and spread method first then we can later go to the pivot method i've used the slash and spread method earlier and i'm repeating it the second time so this will help you to understand it better so i'll be transferring this pattern on a fresh pattern paper now based on the style we have on our reference image we have a connection from the boss pan measurement which is a dart point to the mid arm hole but this is on one side and not on both sides i'll be transferring this pattern to close one side of the arm hole then open up the second arm hole on the dart point
I'm ready to transfer my pattern on a fresh pattern paper and I will start by constructing the dart I open up on the mid ham hole. I'll be transferring my lines on the fresh pattern paper. So this is mostly needed by the side of the pattern. So that after cutting my fabric, I'll be able to notch the point. Then I will mark out the hapex. This is very important. So now I can remove the pattern and continue with the drafting. This is the final stage of this tutorial. I've transferred the pattern on a fresh pattern paper as you can see this is the left hand side of the pattern and this is the right hand side of the pattern the left hand side is where we have the half shoulder and this is the dart we transferred and this is the boss pan point so this is the boss pan and this is a boss pan this is the apex and this is the apex we are creating a parallel dart. A parallel dart can be one or two. It can be single or double. But based on this image, we'll be creating a single parallel dart. And the connection is from the boss pan point on the waist level to the mid ham hole we have on the left hand side. Like so. So, as you can see, we have our pattern in two sides. Now, this is one, and this is the second one. So, this is one, and this is two. So, I'll be doing this one after the other. So, let's set to the left hand side first before going to the right hand side. So, for the left hand side, I will be closing the dart. So I have to do this in order to fix every broken point I have on my pattern. So I have to be sure there's no broken point. So this is the arm hole. I will reconstruct the arm hole in order to fix any broken point I have around the arm hole. So that's the arm hole. Immediately after fixing the broken point, I will add my seam allowance. So I'm adding seam allowance of 0 0.5 inches. After applying your dart manipulation, you can make use of your dart in different ways. You can make it a complete invisible dart. So you can see what I'm doing. I've closed the dart. I can decide to close it permanently and cut it out on the back fabric like so. So that doesn't mean I don't have that on my dress. The effect of the dart will be there, but the dart is not visible. And at the same time, you can pleat your dart. So I will cut this out. I'm cutting on the same allowance I had it. So then I will come to the neckline area and add my same allowance.
So I will leave that and come to the right side of the pattern. So after adding some allowance on the neckline, I will add some allowance on the shoulder line. And I'm turning my pattern upside down. So this is the shoulder line. So then I'll come to the dart and fold the dart. So I just have a little broken point on the hamper which I will fix and have my seam allowance instantly. So there's a little break on the hamper which I'm fixing right away. So I'm cutting on the same allowance of 0.5 inches I had it. Now I'm on the shoulder line. Then I'm cutting out the hamper. Then I will stop there and come to the side, add one inch seam allowance by the side so I can open up this dart now. Okay guys, now I can cut out the remaining part of the pattern. It's time to separate the two patterns. As you can see, our pattern is ready and is looking beautiful. We have it as a single pattern. This is that manipulation. You can decide to have your pattern as a single piece like this. Pick your dart, cut it out or pleat it. You can do anything you like with your dart manipulation. But based on our reference image, we have to separate this, have it as a two pieces. So the line is there already. So we have a connection from the mid armhole to the dart point on the right side of the front bodies. So that is what we have here. And because of that, I'll be cutting out this dart in order to separate the pattern. So I'm cutting this out. So 
So I'm cutting out the dart. So this are dart intake. Then I will continue cutting. Cutting on the straight line. This line you can decide to make it any shape of your choice. But because of our reference picture, we have it as a straight line. That is why I have it as a straight line as well. You can decide to make yours a curve line. You can make it curve if you don't want it completely straight. So we have this aside. So this is one. This is one and this is the second one. So this is the left. So this is the left and this is the right. Now to the dart we have on the right side of the pattern, you can do anything with this dart. You can decide to close this dart permanently. So with this dart, you can decide to close this dart permanently. It all depends on you. So if I want to close it permanently, I will just tip it like this. So when I'm cutting out my fabric, no traces of that. And you will not know I already picked my dart on that point. So that is what that manipulation can do for you. Can you see the bust area is coming out? already and you can pick the dart as well to make it a star and you can also have this as three pieces look at this we have another line here this is the dart line i can decide to cut this dart out cut this out and connect with this line cut the line straight down as well and still have another pattern then I have my center front as three pieces. And you'll be wondering how this was achieved. You can see it's very simple. It is very simple to achieve. But based on the reference image, I was looking at the picture. I'm not sure if the dart was picked or closed permanently. But I think there's no dart around the other side. I'm not sure there's dart there. So I will just be closing this permanently. But before that, I will have to move my dart away from the apex point. So and because of that, I will measure one inch forward. So my folding will not get to the apex so that I don't have a pointed dart. So there's the apex and this is my one inch point. And I will reconstruct the dart and refold. So I'm reconstructing the darts, moving my darts away from the apex. So the final dart you have left on your pattern has to be moved away from the apex. But while you are still closing and opening your darts, you construct your dart to the apex point. So that is the difference. So this is the final dart, so I have to move it away from the apex then I will now refold my dart. So pardon me for turning the pattern so that I'll be able to fold it easily. So this is the dart point. So my folding will start from the dart point, DP, that's the dart point. I've taped this and I'll reconstruct my hand hole so that I will see the line. The pattern is finally ready. As you can see, what I did here is more or less like picking a dart. Because you can see the effect already. You can see the bust area. 
So instead of cutting out the dart on my fabric and stitch the dart together, I already done that on the pattern. So that is why you are seeing, you can see how beautiful the bust area really come out. And after constructing this as well, we have the same effect. This is a final look of the pattern. You can see it's looking beautiful. You can see how the bust area really comes out. You can see the shape on the paper already. Now imagine how it will look on the body. So this is what that manipulation can help you to achieve. And based on our reference image, this is going to be a separate fabric and this side also is separate another fabric. So two different fabrics are joined together. But at the joining point, so this is the joining point where I have my paper tape. It's like I've joined the two pieces together. You have to add your same allowance on both sides, which you will use in joining the two pieces together so that you don't have a shortage after construction. So you can see now that that manipulation is totally different from princess that. Princess that, armor princess that, neckline princess that, shoulder princess that. It's like one out of thousands or millions of styles you can bring out from that manipulation. What you need to learn is learn that manipulation and you'll be able to interpret any style you come across. So guys, I quickly put this together for you guys to see the final output of the style. As you can see, it is looking neat and beautiful. So this is achieved using the slash and spread method of that manipulation. And I have the neckline. The neckline is asymmetrical. And one side of the top is an off shoulder. And I attached a neckline yoke as well. It is not necessary you make one side of your bodies an off shoulder before you can make an asymmetrical neckline. You can as well make one side of the neckline depth more than the other side let's assume i use three inches for this side you can use six inches or five for the other side so with this you can as well achieve an asymmetrical neckline and again the journey i have that passes through the apex to the other side of the front bodies is easily achieved using slash and spread method of that manipulation though it looks simple but it's somewhat technical to achieve but it can easily be achieved using that manipulation. You can use slash and spray and you can use pivot method. Both methods are good. If you have any question as you guys this tutorial, feel free to drop them at the comment section as I'll be so glad to attend to them all. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on male and female apparel. Till we meet in my next video, always remember, there's no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs.